inspired. I think it was more revenge. <laughs> Tell us. I mean, I wrote the song. I was with a, a music publishing company in the 60s, um, kind of trying to be a songwriter, not even a singer particularly, but I was quite happy to write them songs, and they would give these songs to different artists. That was the idea, anyway. Nothing ever came of it. I think, I think they got, like, three placed. And one of the things they gave me was this French song, and they said, do an English lyric to this. So I wrote this god-awful lyric. Even a fool learns to love, it was called. It was dreadful. God, it's so awful. Really embarrassingly bad. And uh, I, I sang the lyric to the actual record that they sent me from France. <laughs> so you hear the actual, there's a tape of me, you can hear, it's on, it's, I, I've seen it on the internet, I mean, it's sort of, it's available. Um, you hear the French song in the background, you hear me singing my lyric over the top of it, it's very funny. They're funny men, don't let them down, oh, my dogs and dogs and be their clown. The next time I heard it, it was My Way by Frank Sinatra. What happened to my Oh, I'm sorry, but it wasn't very good, so we got Paul Anker to do it. So I, I was really pissed off. I thought, oh, it should have been my song, you know? So I thought, okay, I'll write my own version. So it's uh, My Way on Mars. Can you actually record something from the sessions when you recorded Life from Mars? Uh, this was 1971 or something. Yeah, it was hunky-dory, wasn't it? That yeah. was on. Those sessions seemed to me to be awfully... Um, I know there were musicians on the album that I hadn't really worked with before, so I felt a little bit insecure about whether it was going to come out sounding the way I wanted it to. That's the only thing I remember. Um, but it turned out okay, didn't it? Was it Waitman on piano? One funny thing is that um, the song wasn't released as a single until summer 1973. Is and by then right? you had released both Sigur Stardust and Albert okay. Insane. So, how You come? know better than me. I don't know. Don't know? Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Was it really? Yeah. Did it, did it do anything? <laughs> I thought Mick Rock had some really quite radical ideas, you know, and, and uh, I love the way he filmed that. It was so bizarre. I'd had no idea he was going to do that, uh, he was, that he was going to burn everything out like that. It, and it was just remarkable. I mean, it's a, it's a strange piece of film, but it's quite beautiful. Quite beautiful in its own way. I've never been very proud of the whole Hunky Dory album, actually. I, I, I thought, well, this is really good. <laughs> this is a good album. And you know something, I think the other interesting thing about that album, including that song, is that, again, they felt great to play on stage. They were such easy songs to work on stage that uh, it, was, uh, it was really a joy singing them. I enjoyed them. And I keep, I keep finding that I do go back to songs from that album to do on stage, even now. Things like Quicksand I've done, you know? Uh, Queen Bitch I've done. Andy Warhol, even. I think that really that my subject matter hasn't really changed over the years. That I'm still, in a way, writing Life on Mars <laughs> all these years later. You know, it hasn't. And the man who sold the world. I mean, it, the way that I present songs has changed a lot. And the style for each album has changed considerably. Um, I'll often mm. try new rhythms and new uh, kinds of arrangements. Um, it's like. I want to keep writing about the same subject, but my approach, it's like I'm trying to get into it, like finding a different door each time I approach that same subject. And it's about alienation, then? A lot of it is. Yeah, one's, one's interior kind of isolation as well, you know? It doesn't just mean one's social isolation. It can mean, you know, how you get in contact with your own feelings, you know, as well. It can be quite personal in that way. 